Hello. Now, after fleeing war-torn Afghanistan as a young child, Wahid Aryan arrived in the UK as a refugee. He was from Pakistan and he was aged just 15. He was told to set his sights on becoming a taxi driver, but after teaching himself English, he studied medicine at university and became an NHS doctor. He's written an extraordinary life story, and we get to meet him now. Wahid, uh, very good morning to you. Uh, I, I use that, I feel very confident in using the term extraordinary around your life story because uh, I, I don't know where to begin. You, you were in Afghanistan as a young boy, your family was there, and you witnessed and were part of a, a really difficult start in life with your family alongside you. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, I did. I was uh, born into war in Afghanistan in 1983 during the Afghan-Soviet conflict and spent the first five years of my life uh, hiding from uh, the daily rocket bombs and shellings in the cellars. And then after that, we had to move to Pakistan as refugees, living in refugee camp for three years, uh, suffering from malaria and tuberculosis. Um, the conditions were horrendous. Uh, family of eight to 10 living in one room with temperatures rising up to 85, 45 degrees with uh, lack of sanitation and no food. And I contracted tuberculosis, but that's where I also got uh, inspired to see firsthand the power of healing by this doctor. So I wanted to heal other people, my family members, and uh, um, to give back to Afghanistan in any way I could. We went back to Afghanistan in 1991, uh, but then the Civil war started that lasted till 99. It was a very bloody civil war that went from street to street. Uh, and most of my learning happened in Silas uh, on my own because we had to hide again from the daily rockets and the bombs. And then age 15, um, I had to leave Afghanistan, everything behind to come to the UK as a child refugee because of the compassion that I was given by the British government, by the British people. I was allowed to stay, I was given safety, but I also brought with me a hope and a dream. And that dream was to become a doctor, uh, to give back to, to the people. So I studied during the night because I had to work during the day, several jobs in the shop uh, as a cleaner um, and also in a, in a grocery store. But I didn't give up on anything uh, because I had that, that dream with me along with the fact that um, I had a hope that someday I will be able to inspire hopefully other people like me who come in with nothing, but they come in with a dream to do something with their lives. Well, you know, the problem is with um, us at the moment is we, ne we, we don't have the time to explain just how remarkable and how determined you were and just how extraordinary your journey has been. So, and that is in the book, which honestly I've read and I thought it was brilliant. But what, what two things that struck me, your resilience and determination but also the kindness of strangers that you met along the way. I'm thinking of Patrick. I'm thinking of, you know, in the shop, I'm thinking of teachers, tutors who pushed you and gave you opportunities because you pushed as well. But that, that's what touched me from your book. You're absolutely right. It's about the compassion. Um, resilience is more subjective in that sense, but the compassion is universal. And the compassion that was given to me first by the British people, by so many other people, the, the person who gave me the first job in the shop, the barrister who let me off prison because I didn't have the right paperwork. So he argued for me, all the charges were dropped. And then later on, um, I was given so much kindness at Cambridge University. I was accepted, of course, on my merit, but I received because I had suffered from social isolation. I had PTSD and mental health issues. I had so much support around there. But then when I became a doctor, I wanted to use that compassion back to give to other people as well, but not on my own. Uh, then I founded a charity through that charity, which is Telly Heal. I brought the compassion of so many people around the NHS, also from across the globe, to use, give their expertise on smartphones to medics in conflict zone and lower those countries. And it's because of that compassion that we are saving lives on a daily basis. So I absolutely agree with you. If I may add, after the pandemic, I think we've all realized the importance of solidarity and compassion. I've worked on the front line in the NHS uh, right from the start of the pandemic. It's been one of the proudest moments of my life, to be able to serve people here as well as, as a humanitarian globally. But again, I was touched by the solidarity of our colleagues, ex-refugees, uh, immigrants, British people who were born here. But we all stood shoulder to shoulder, giving kindness to people 
and standing up to the pandemic saying that, no, we won't be defeated. So I absolutely agree with you. You know, uh, Dr. Wahid Arian, I know we haven't de done justice to your book because your story is amazing. And we really thank you for your time this morning. And of course, the work you're doing now, as with all doctors and health workers, uh, full of respect for what you're doing at the moment. Lovely to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. So Wahid's autobiography, In the Wars, a story of conflict, survival and saving lives, is a remarkable story and it's out today. That's all from breakfast this morning. Back tomorrow from 6am. Now it's time for Morning Live with Kim and Gethin.